I want you to take a look at 2 Chronicles 7. You know, God appears to Solomon. That shocks many people. God had actually appeared to Solomon. And he announced something for Solomon. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Now the purist will immediately say, now wait a minute, wait a minute, that applies that, that's given to Solomon on behalf of Israel, and denotatively absolutely correct. But let me tell you something else about God that I think you already know. God is immutable. He changes not. He's not the God of Allah, who is presented by the Quran as capricious, can do anything. No, no, no. Our God delights in making and keeping his promises. He is not, he's announcing a principle here. If my people are called by my name. How many of you in this room are God's people? Can I see a show of hands? Praise God for that. I won't ask you the next question. Because some of you are probably the best undercover Christians the world has ever seen. <laughs> no one, your family, your neighbors, never suspect that you're, you're sold out to Jesus Christ. If you are on trial for being a Christian, there's not enough evidence to convict you. I hope I'm being facetious. God says, if my people who are called by my name, if they will do four things, I'll do three. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. We know how to do that. We may not do it enough, but we know how to do that. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. We know how to pray. That's no, that's no rocket science. The reason we're in trouble so often, that's the only time he hears from us. We're not to pray. We need to pray. We, and we need to pray more. Okay. If my people are called by name, will humble themselves and pray. Oh, and seek my face. What's that all about? That's not a head trip thing. That's an intimacy thing. That's an aspiration. That's a, that's a volitional thing. That's the kind of thing you aspired to when you were courting your spouse. Seek my face. If my people are called by my name, who are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, uh oh, here's the rub, and turn from their wicked ways. Ouch. That pinches. Here's something that most people miss about this verse. Who is it written to? It's not written to the pagan left in the corridors of power. It's not written to your MPs, or our congressmen, or senators, or whoever. It's not written to the spiritually bankrupt executives that run our entertainment industry. Who is it written to? Us. They're sitting right here. If my people, who are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and, and, and uh, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, I believe that what's in the way of what God would prefer to do, and I think what he'd prefer to do is have our countries, yours and mine, continue to be a beachhead for the gospel to a hurting world. But what's in the way is not the pagan left. It's not the unbelievers. What's in the way are us. When they ask Gandhi, what's the biggest impediment to Christianity in India, he says, Christians. Perceptive answer. If they will turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Apparently not until then in a corporate sense. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Praise God for that. Devoutly to be wished, isn't it? Will forgive their sin. Remember the Christian's bar of soap. 1 John 1.9 If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Praise His holy name. Then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Well, I want to remind you of the challenge I want you to consider, because this challenge, if correct, should alter every one of our priorities for every one of us in this room. Now, how close are we? What is your action plan? Are you in Christ? Great. Then my next question is, what are you doing for Christ's sake? And don't misunderstand my tone. I'm not being sacrilegious here. What are you doing for his sake?
We celebrate someone accepting Christ with great, cel- with great ceremony. Now, that's a starting gun, not a finish line. God saved each one of us for a specific thing. And the great adventure in life is to discover what it is God saved you for. You have a mission and the great treasure is to discover what it is. Are you raising the bar on your spiritual walk? This is 2008. When you get to 2009, will you be a notch better spiritually? Or will you have drifted away a little? I don't think you can hold. You're either growing or shrinking. I mean, that's just life. What are you doing to raise the bar on your walk? I can tell you, frankly, whatever else it includes, it's going to require a systematic, continuing study of the Word of God. Well, well I read it every day. That's devotional, re- that's devotional reading. I take that for granted. Well, I'm, uh, tomorrow I'm going to do this. You know what tomorrow is? You need to know what tomorrow is. Tomorrow is when the fools repent, and tomorrow is when the idle work. Tomorrow is when the idle work. There is a restaurant in Newport Beach, a very well-known seafood restaurant, has a big sign out front, free crab tomorrow. <laughs> it takes the tourist a while to realize it's a put-on, of course. Tomorrow is when the idle work, the fools repent, and tomorrow is when I start my diet. And you tell how effective that's been. Okay. How do you raise your bar? Commit to a systematic study, and the best way to do that, you, many of you can do it personally, you have the self-discipline to do that, but the best way is to do it in a small group. I've been an active Christian for 60 years, and the place I've seen people grow is invariably in a small group, 6 to 12, small enough to ask questions without embarrassment, small enough to hold each other accountable. And not just a small group, but one that is studying the Word of God, verse by verse, expositionally. Join a small group, and if you can't find one, start one. Today it's easy. You don't have to be a teacher to lead a small group. All you need to do is pop a DVD in the player, have some cookies and donuts or whatever, and just discuss it. And just be able to control it so one person doesn't dominate, and the Holy Spirit will take over. Just watch it happen. Start one. You can do it online today. Your small group can do it online. If you're the leader and you're the group, you could all be getting university credit if you want. And you also have the benefit of a curriculum and support materials. There's a whole online thing I'll get to in a minute. But the main thing you want to do, and I'd like you to resolve privately, personally to do this before you leave this room, is to discover what God has called you for. And then get on with it. Now there's a unique resource I want you to know about. And that's a think tank that you can be part of. And... uh, we in a culture that denies the very existence of truth. It takes this kind of resource to fight the battle, we believe. And uh, there's no more critical arena for those that take the Word of God seriously. We believe the Lord is, in, is putting new wine in new skins. When I've got an audience that's here like this, I feel led to ask a strange question. And the question I'm going to ask is not for everybody. I'm going to indulge just, uh, ask you to indulge me just a little bit. Is there somebody here in this audience that believes God has been calling, is calling him or her into a special assignment? If, if you feel that God is calling you to some kind of special project, I have no idea what it might be, but if you, if you are... If God is calling to some kind of special project, if you feel that calling, would you please stand? Is there somebody here that feels, praise God, oh my goodness, praise God. Well, no wonder. Okay, praise God. Praise God. Well, what I, I have no idea what's going on here, but it's his, it's, it's his game. Let, let me ask you to do the, praise God. While you're standing there, I'd like you to close your eyes, bow your head, and in your own way, confirm to him that you're available for what he's calling you to do. Declare your availability to him and ask him to make clear to you just what it is he's calling you for. And when you think you know what it is that he's calling you for, you can go ahead and sit down. But in the meantime... Simply in your own way, 
Declare your availability to him. And let him ask him to clarify. I have no idea what it might be. It might be some personal baggage you need to shed. It might be something in your local church. It might be something of a broader scope. I wouldn't be that presumptuous to even try to guess. But you declare your availability to him. And when you have believe you know what it is he is calling you to do, you can go ahead and be seated.